Y'all ready for <laughs> another word from the nine tests that every Christian must face? <clears throat> Today being the self-will test. <laughs> and uh, if you come expecting you got your still toed shoes on, you're ready. But if you don't, slide your shoe, slide your, your toes right up underneath the seat in front of you. <laughs> Amen. But uh, this is a uh, it's a good word from the Lord, and uh, we're all going to leave uh, pondering what was said today, if you came expecting. The first slide is uh, Matthew 26. Starting with verse 36. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. It says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, and he began to be filled with anguish and deep distress. He told them, my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death. Stay here and watch with me. Next slide. He went on a little farther and fell face down on the ground praying. He said, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet I want your will, not mine. He did not want to have to do what he was about to have to do. He was asking his father, please don't make me do this. Next slide in 42, we see again after he talked to his disciples for falling asleep, he, he left them and he prayed and he said, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away until I drink it, your will be done. He does not want to do this. And yet even... At verse 44, we see that he goes back again. And on the third time, we see that he's saying the same things again. Yes, I want your will, not mine. Your will be done. He did not want to have to do this. Self-will. Do not miss the point that Jesus was saying time and time again. Three times we get to read it in the Word. Where he's saying, Lord, I don't want to do this. Lord, I don't want to do what you've asked me to do. I do not want to have to go and submit to this authority. I do not want to have to submit to the authority that you've placed over me. Hello, y'all have had this message before about submitting to authority placed over you. He don't want nothing to do with that. But he says, Lord, not my will, your will be done. Perfect example. Perfect example of total submission in being a servant. And this is our, Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ talking to His Father in heaven. The self-will test. Next slide. Is defined as pleasing oneself in opposition to the wishes and desires of others. Especially with leadership placed over us. Because our leadership, and we've been through this for, for all the Bible studies we've had, from the government to the church, God ordained. You know, another word for stubbornness is self-pleasing or arrogant or overbearing. They all fit. And we're all that way. Because we're flesh. We have a self-will. And we let it override what God's got in store for us. There, I know everybody can tell me stories of how their self-will and they did what they wanted at work. Hello. At home. Yeah. Let's talk about the dangers of self-will. Next slide. Self-will brings destruction into the life of an individual. Can you believe that? Self-will brings destruction. You're nodding, but is it happening to you? Amen. Is it ha self-will brings destruction. Now this is me saying it, but here's the Word of God. Proverbs 1.32, the contemporary English version says, Sin and self-satisfaction brings destruction and death to stupid fools. <laughs> I like that version. <laughs> Amen. Sin and self-satisfaction brings destruction and death to stupid fools. Next slide. Self-will stems from pride and produces pride's limitations. See, pride blinds us, man. 
Nehemiah 9.16, King James Version says, But they and our fathers dealt proudly, proudly, pride, and hardened their necks and hearkened not to thy commandments. They didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't do what God wanted them to do. Proverbs 16.18, the good word says, Pride precedes a disaster, and an arrogant attitude precedes a fall. It's the word, man. Self-will stems from pride and produces pride's limitations. Pride blinds us to our own weaknesses. It's our own pride that makes us do something even when the weakness is there because we don't see it. Everybody else around us sees it. Pride keeps us from seeking help. Been there, huh? Pride keeps us from making amends to people when we know we did wrong. We know what we did was totally wrong. And we won't make amends because of the pride in us. Pride causes us to blame others for problems. It's their fault. It's because he won't do this or she won't do that. <laughs> oh, Nick. <laughs> pride causes us to blame others for our problems because he won't do that or she won't do this. My boss won't do this. He won't listen to that. Or my pastor did this. He won't do this. My brother in Christ said this about me. And, if, and it causes problems. We want to blame. Next slide. A self-willed person cannot be trusted. You realize a person that cannot be trusted can't be used. And a person that can't be used can't be promoted. And a person that can't be promoted is stuck with himself. Y'all getting this, right? Now, I know everybody in here can relate to being told they got to do something they don't want to do. Or being told they can't do something that they want to do. And the self-will kicks in. Like, well, I'll show him. I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> in the, in the, I, I, any job. You don't have, I got a military example because of my background. But most of you, many of you are military or worked with the military. But still, even on your job, you can relate to this and put this into your, your perspective. But... One of the things I had happen to me many, many years ago, don't even want to talk about how long ago it was, but I had two E5s under me and they needed to go to the board. And finally, I was allowed to send one. And you all know how that works if you're in the military. And, and if, you're in, if you're in a management position, you, you might have two people that you want to promote, but your boss says you can promote one. And you want to promote both of them. They both are deserving. And I had two E5s and I had to promote, I had to let one go to the board for E6, which is the first step. You know, he's going to get, and then he gets his points, blah, blah, blah. I had to make a decision. I had to give it to him at the end of this field maneuvers, which is a little over two weeks, about 16-day field maneuver. And I put out. Because we were out there, and the f we were field rats. And I told him, I said, if you recover a vehicle and take it back to UMCP, don't you get any of them uh, hot A's? Because everybody else is getting C rats here. MREs now. And I said, we're getting three MREs a day, and you're going to get what they, everybody else get. Don't you go back and take advantage of them hot A's and come back talking smack to the rest of these guys. It's not good. You know, I don't want you to do that. And they both recovered a vehicle during that. A lot more than just two vehicles. But anyway, they recovered some vehicles. And I had one guy that, uh, he managed his time, personnel, and assets properly. In his own mind. He had the youngest private run and get all the hot A's for everybody. While they disconnected the vehicle and left the broke vehicle to be worked on by people. They scarfed up their food and they got back in almost record time. Great time. Very proud of that E5. And I sent another E5, okay, on the next mission. They took turns on their missions. And he got there, and he had a lot of issues with this vehicle. Just getting it hooked up, he had to tear some stuff up on the vehicle to get it hooked up because they damaged it pretty bad. If you work recovery, they usually tear stuff up pretty bad. Anyway, long story short, um, they ate their MREs on the vehicle while they worked on this track to get it disconnected so they come back, and they took twice as long as the other crew. Now, I was upset, and I called them in. I said, what took you so long? My first thought is that they did what? They got them hot A's. I was fixing to say, hey, I told you no hot A's. We'll kind of find out he didn't. And he told me everything went wrong. It's okay. Well, I never thought about the other guy because he was so fast. But you know, how many of y'all know when you talk about somebody else, he gets back to him? Oh, yeah. How many of y'all know, no matter what you say, eventually, it might be a day, a week, or three months later, but you find out sometimes from the same person that lied to you. You know what I'm saying? Before the field problem was over. Before the field problem was over, I found out. And so I confronted the E5. I said, I told you no hot days, dude. And he... Proceeded to explain to me that he managed his personnel assets and time properly. What he didn't do is he didn't submit to the authority placed over him. Needless to say, you know who went to the board next. 
Amen. Because that's what it's about. Submitting to the authority over you. And it's the same thing with the word of God. It's the same thing with the authority that's placed over you from God. So you have a spiritual application as well. That was a worldly application. And you know everyone here can relate to that with their jobs. But it's in this world too. In the word. Right here. From the church. In the body. And you have a spiritual authority placed over you. And when you do the same things. And self will takes over. You're, you're, you're in total uh, contradiction with what God wants you to do. Amen. Hello. Next slide. Self will stems from unbelief. 2 Kings 17, 14. The English Standard Version says. But they would not listen. But they were stubborn. As their fathers had been. Who did not believe in the Lord their God. Self will is exhibited in a refusal to listen to God. Have you ever said, this surely can't be God's will. I mean, you think about that E5 back at the UMCP. They got plenty of time to get the food. He's like, surely it's not going to hurt to go ahead and get these hot A's. You know, we do the same thing. We're going through life and things are going not right. And if some of us, some of y'all just come up here for prayer, was even in a, in a storm, you're like, surely this can't be of God. But God is control of all things, isn't he? God does allow us to go through all these tests, doesn't he? And when we're going through these tests, we're like, this can't be of God. And your self-will kicks in. And you go ahead and do what you think's right. But yet when you look at it, nah, it was really just something selfish that you wanted. Something that you thought was the way you wanted. A refusal to submit to authority placed over us by God is a refusal to submit to God. And God sees that. And many of you all have already had this with the other Bible studies. A refusal to re uh, receive instruction or receive correction from the Word of God. Some of us read the Word and during that time get stirred up that we need to quit doing something we're doing or start doing something we're not doing. And we quench that with our self-will. We convince ourselves. We even talk to God verbally or audibly and let Him know. Well, I understand this, Lord, but I know you're not talking to me because... <laughs> Come on. Next slide. You need to be able to recognize the self-will test. It's pretty simple. When God asks us to do something that's contrary to our own desires or opposite of our plans, we are entering the self-will test. It's that simple. All of us are asked to do things daily Amen. that we probably would rather do something else. Do you know this is not new? It's as old as time. And we got great examples in the Word of God. And yet we see things that we're, that we, we see things in our own life. And when you see the things in the Word, you're like, man, my, my problem's nothing. It's nothing compared to Abraham going to sacrifice Isaac. You know, he had to struggle with that while he was headed that way. None of us are asked to sacrifice our child. The things that we have to sacrifice are nothing compared to that. Jonah to preach to Nineveh. I mean, he had to get swallowed by a well. Some of y'all are swallowed by a well right now or are getting swallowed. You're in the storm of the ocean getting ready to be taken down because you're not in the will of God. You're in your self-will. You've got to apply this to your life and take it home today. Yep. Amen? Mm -hmm. These are tests that we all go through. The nine tests that every Christian must face. Peter to cast his net on the other side. You never cast your net on that side of the boat. It makes no sense at all. The boat was designed to only cast it on one side. A lot of y'all had that Bible study. That was a big step for him to finally do out of faith and cast it to the wrong side. And the most... I mean... The ultimate... Christ has to face Calvary. Which is what we opened up with. I mean... Christ was letting us know. Not my will, but your will be done. Next slide. Why do we go to the self-test? Why do we have the self-will test? It's to reveal our own personal ambitions. When you look at the things that you decide to do against whatever authority is placed over you, it's because of your own personal ambitions. I saw a, vi um, a, a picture. There's a big cartoon, a religious cartoon, and it shows the preacher standing up at the pulpit, and he is, he, he is envisioning a sanctuary that will hold 500 people. With recliners. You know, they just, they got it made. And, and the, the music ministers over here, and you see the little thing go up, and what he sees is a, a, a place set up with, with a choir of a hundred people. And <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And the, the children's minister is, the little thing goes up and it shows a daycare center that can handle a thousand kids. You see, what was the will of God there? You see what I'm saying? The division among the church is because the self-will gets in the way. <laughs> 
building up my own little ministry. Amen? Amen. And, and, and that's what that's, that happens it, because the flesh gets in there. But what does God want? Do we pray about that? It's to reveal our selfishness. And it's to reveal and break down our self-will. Because until we get past that, it's going to keep happening. Some of us go through the same test all the time. We keep failing, so we just keep going and going and going. You know, the Lord gives us, I mean, and the thing is, is and I tell you, I don't preach Happy Meal religion. When you pass this, <laughs> the next self-will test is going to be a little harder. Now, we ain't never, I guarantee you, I can, I, I can say this confidently. The Lord's never going to tell me to go physically sacrifice my son, Ethan Wayne Van Horn. Okay? But my self-will tests have gotten harder and harder over time because I've succeeded at some of them. So I'm telling you, if you're just still messing with the self-will test between you and your wife, you've got a long ways to go. I mean, that's the reason for divorces. 90% of the time, self-will. On both parts, most of the time. Next slide. People stuck on themselves are stuck with themselves. <laughs> A self-willed person is inflexible. And that's like I said, that's divorce, friendships. Friendship's over. Get unfriended on Facebook because... <laughs> and with our God. We, we sever our relationship with God because we're inflexible. We're too hard-headed. Self-willed person is inconsiderate to others and to God, what God wants with us. God's a gentleman. And so He doesn't force you to quit doing something you don't want to quit. He doesn't force you to do something you don't want to do. But He lets you know. It's stirring up. It's there. Amen. <laughs> Getting some north and south over here. Amen. Self-willed person is a constant conflict. They're always in constant conflicts. Physical. Emotional. Spiritual conflicts. They see it going on. You see the storms and I can see it from the outside. And you can see it with your brothers and sisters from the outside. They're going through storms. They brought on themselves because of their own self-will. It gets out of portion. The proportion is just unbelievable. The molehill has become a mountain in their lives because of their self-will. Most problems in relationships are due to self-will. you know that? Think about the last time you had a relationship issue with a brother or sister in Christ or a relationship issue with your wife or your husband. A relationship issue with your boss. It was your self-will. Think about that for a second. You know I'm telling you the truth. Amen, brother. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 12.20 The NIV says... For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not find me as I want you to be. I fear that there may be quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, factions, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. And listen, folks, that is Paul talking to the church. To the church. The body of Christ. Next slide. Most church issues and splits are the result of self-will. There is no church that doesn't have people leave. And when they do, you find out it's self-will. Yeah, that hurt. That's the truth. It's self-will. Next slide. Even an angel became a devil because of self-will. Nobody is immune to self-will. You have to pass the test. Get past it. Isaiah 14, 12 says, how art, thou, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? Yep. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. <laughs> and it, it happens. It happens to us. Again, in, this, this is... Uh, uh, again, within what would be the body. I mean, angel becomes a devil. Huh? Churches fall apart. Satan gets in there with self-will. God allows a test so you can become better Christians. Amen? Next slide. The self-will test reveals a level of submission of the individual. What level are we at? Because all of us will submit to certain things. And we've had this Bible study too. We have so many Bible studies that relate to uh, being submissive to God and to the Romans 13. Boy, that was a hard one for a lot of us. 
especially with the last administration and realizing we had to be uh, we had to respect and pray for the things that we were going through but um we all learned a lot there but uh everyone must answer to someone everyone has to answer to someone what level of submission are you at Life's full of people telling you what to do. Life's full of people telling me what to do. Every day at work. I got a, I got a mission that morning. It might get changed a couple times during the day. And I don't like that. And my self-will kicks in. I tell you, my self-will kicks in big time because I don't have anybody watching me. Now that's a test. I get a phone call from a thousand miles away to tell me what I need to start doing. And there ain't nobody to watch to see if I do it or not. That's a test straight from God. I'm going to tell you why I'm there. And I give Him all the glory for it. Because I spent so many years being submissive and submitting to the authority over me that now I can be in that place. Because there's, there's only one in the world that gets to do that. God give me... And now God give me a helpmate. Or a helper. Helpmate's my wife. But a helper. Amen. So now, so now I, got, I got a guy that, that's learning. And he's like, there's been, there'll be an opportunity. And that little thing, the tongue, gets in there. And he's like... He's like, hey, Monty, they, but they're not going to know. We can still do ten of these before it's, bite your tongue. <laughs> bite your tongue. And he's like, you're going to shut the machine down and do it? I said, you daggum right we are. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And he just shakes his head. But he's learning now. He's learning as an apprentice that you submit now and you will be blessed. Amen. You will be blessed. Amen. I have a job I couldn't, I can't even believe I got that job. That's why there's a church. I prayed for that job so I could have this church because I was a field rat. I'm those people I used to make fun of. I'm in a lab. I see. Oh, I'm a lab rat. If everybody only did what he or she wanted to, chaos would begin. And it would just be a chaos in this whole world. Self-will is the opposite of submission. Self-will is the opposite of submission. It's a placing yourself and what your desires are over whoever was placed over you. In your job, at your church, in your family. The spiritual leader of the family. You talk about some discord in a family. Oh well. We'll submission to the will of God is what Christianity is all about. In fact, you could sum up the Bible in one word, submission. Amen. Jesus proved that. What a servant of all. Begging his father not to make him go through that. So much so that he was bleeding. He was sweating blood. Submission. 1 Peter 5.5 5 says, Younger, submit to the elder. Hebrews 13.17 Obey them that rule over you and submit yourselves. It's the Word. You don't have to listen to me. If you came expecting, the Word should be stirring you up. Colossians 3.18 Wives, submit to your own husbands. James 4.7 Submit yourselves to God. 1 Peter 2.13 Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. i got to say that one again. We had a Bible study over that and we, it was hard for us to swallow. But the facts are facts. Romans 13 is there. It will always be there. And when we're gone, we still have to live by it. Or, or somebody else will. <laughs> Amen. How we lived by it depends on where we end up maybe. 1 Peter 2.13 Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. We learn that unless it's directly in denial and contradictory to God's word, we are to obey. 1 Peter 5, 8, be subject one to another. Yes, we're accountable to each other. Yes, we're to judge one another inside the body. Judge not lest I be judged. Read all of it. Get the big thing out of your eyes so you can. <laughs> Amen? Do it out of love. Don't get that Bible and hit somebody over the head. Now you just, you cross the line. Next slide. The self-test screens out would-be leaders. Now here we are back to the, the physical, the, the flesh side, the worldly side. If you cannot submit to others, you can't lead others. If you cannot submit to authority, no one will submit to your authority. And you know that. If you've got a military background or if you're in a management position now, you didn't get there anyway but by submitting to the authority under you. And if you did, that empire is going to fall. The self-will test will ensure heaven is a perfect place. Here's the spiritual side. No one but those who have submitted themselves to God and others will ever enter the kingdom of heaven. Wow! Jude, 116, the Message Bible. I like that. It should be called the Biker's Bible. I like the Message Bible a lot of times. It says, 
These are the grumpers, the belly acres, grabbing for the biggest piece of the pie. Did I tell you what verse? 16. Message. Jude 1 16. Okay, Message Bible. Because you ain't going to find it in <laughs> trying to look through the Message Bible. These are the grumpers, the belly acres, grabbing for the biggest piece of pie, talking big, saying anything they think will get them ahead. Don't be looking at your neighbor. You've probably done that too. Amen. Next verse, 17. But remember, dear friends, that the apostles of our Master, Jesus Christ, told us this would happen. Verse 18. In the last days, there will be people who don't take these things seriously anymore. They'll treat them like a joke and make a religion of their own whims and lusts. Uh-oh. Verse 19. These are the ones who split churches. Thinking only of themselves. There's nothing to them. There's no sign of the Spirit. See, the Lord was bringing thousands and thousands of angels for judgment. Read all of Jude 1. That was just a section. He's bringing them for judgment for these that I just read. That's pretty harsh. Last slide and in closing. The self-will test. Everyone will encounter it in order to see if we're willing to be submissive to authority, especially when it's not convenient or self-serving. And every one of us deal with this basically on a daily basis. And I have failed miserably over the years. And I am preaching what I practice. It took a long time. And I still got some self-will tests to go that I'm probably going to fail, not probably will, and have to start off because it's, they're bigger ones now. But I promise I'll never have to be crucified. Okay, I'll take it back. I promise I won't have to sacrifice my son. Don't know where we're going with this Christian part, so we might get crucified. It's a sad, sad world state of affairs. When we're willing to lay down our lives in submission, then we have passed the self-will test. Amen? I pray that you came expecting and you can apply this to your lives because if you can, you will start passing some self-will test. Amen, sister? Amen. At work, at home, and in the body of Christ. Those are all important. Within your ministries. It's all important. Praise God. I can see some that's touched. Glory. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for a powerful message. A series we've done before, Lord, but you just continue to touch us as we do it. These nine tests that we all must face, Lord, we know that you allow it. And Lord, the self-will test is one we, don't, we all deal with on a daily basis. Lord, I'm praying right now that each and every one of us is in this room. And the ones that are watching us on YouTube, Lord, I pray right now that the very next test they take, the very next time that the test is applied to them, that they remember what they heard here today. That they remember what you revealed to them through the Word here, through this message, and apply it to their lives and pass that test. Be submissive to you and your authorities. We're claiming this, Lord, in your Son's name. Amen.